Thank the noble Lord for his question. <clears throat> I can confirm that no prosecutions have been brought against post office directors to date. The Horizon Inquiry will establish the facts of what went wrong. It would be wrong to take action before we have all the evidence. Punishing people without looking at all the evidence first is how this st scandal got started. We should not repeat the same error. My Lords, uh, may I remind the Minister that the Government has the sole responsibility for law enforcement. It's no good saying that we are relying on some committee to turn up evidence. You have had 49 months, and in that time, uh, little has happened. Uh, government needs to take steps to charge people for violation of Companies Act, false accounting, lying on oath and conspiracy. After six years, the government hasn't even yet resolved, uh, managed to deal with the directors of Carillion. It does not really inspire much confidence that it will be able to deal with the post office directors. The whole thing is being kicked into the next decade. So rather than hiding behind this inquiry, will the minister now publish a schedule showing the timetable for the government's actions? So I thank the noble lord for that, uh, and I know there's a lot of frustration in this house and in the other place on the timelines here, um, and this has been going on for a very long period of time, almost one generation. But what we have been very clear to say is that we have to separate between the two elements of this sad story, uh, and, and the first case immediately, the first action immediately that we're undertaking is to overturn convictions and give compensation. We then need to come to accountability. Uh, there is a statutory inquiry in place, and it will look at all the facts of the matter. And at that point, there will then be a whole series of cascade of actions taken by the various uh, uh, bodies uh, concerned. We need, to, we need to understand uh, the role of the directors, the ministerial oversight. We need to understand the role of Fujitsu. We need to understand the role of the, the, the auditor, EY. All of that will be done once we have the facts established and once the, the, the Williams Commission has reported. My Lord, um, that's all very well and, and, and good. But um, isn't it obvious that there was a catastrophic failure of governance on the part of the post office? This is a government-owned <coughs> business. It is inconceivable that that board didn't read the newspapers, didn't, wasn't aware of this, and, and, and the post office is still, op still operating. So shouldn't there be at least be a review of the standards of governance that are operating on that board? So the post office is publicly, publicly owned, uh, set up as a limited company with a, sale, a sole shareholder, which is the government, and then it is then, uh, its governance is a, as an arm's length body with its own board, uh, where the government has a shareholder representative. And what is clear is that over the years is that not enough inquiry was made by particularly by the non-executive directors of what was going on. Why was the question not asked that pre-Horizon, when prosecutions were running at 5 to 10 per annum, uh, then it moved to 80 to 100 per annum? The question is always why, what, 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 what happened here. And as, as a High Court judge said in the, 99, uh, in, the, in the appeal in 2019, the faith in the Horizon system was the equivalent of the modern day equivalent of the Flat Earth Society. There has been a, a massive failure here of corporate governance, and once we have the inquiry, steps will be taken to make uh, uh, improvements to ensure that they happen again. Is it sensible for the post office to continue in business even in its present, as presently constituted? Is it not now a totally and irredeemably toxic brand? I personally wouldn't trust the post office if it were to tell me today was Wednesday. <laughs> so as well as holding individuals to account, as owner, should the government not be looking at a fresh start with a new brand new leadership and a new business model incorporating the appropriate ethical principles. Yeah. Yeah. So I thank my noble Lord for that. And that is exactly what will be the outcome of this. Uh, as currently constituted, there's been, no private, there's been no prosecutions taken obviously since 2015. The board has been reconstituted. We have a new chief executive, a new postal minister and new oversight. Uh, I would take issue, in fact, with whether the post office brand is irredeemably damaged, because I believe the post office brand is based on the 11,500 postmasters. And if anything, I think the reputation has been enhanced in this. The reputations that have been damaged have been of management directors and perhaps government ministers. My Lord, did the um, shareholder member of the board report to government what was happening? Because the board must have known about the faults of Fujitsu. And if that shareholder <laughs> member didn't, has government asked why? 
I thank my noble friend for that, and this is exactly uh, the issue that we need to get to the bottom of. This goes back now over a large number of years. We're going to be going back through uh, files and ministerial appointments and meetings uh, notes to find out exactly what notice was given and when. There was a ridiculous uh, faith given to the Horizon computer. Vijutsa themselves have, have acknowledged <coughs> culpability in this matter. And once the Williams report uh, establishes the facts, we will then be able to take necessary action to, to hold those accountable. All of the talk has been around what, what, what happened to sub postmasters, but we should remember that Horizon was being used in the Crown offices, the branches that Post Office Limited themselves managed, so they would have seen the shortcomings of this system through their own management. So it isn't just a question of having to read the papers, as, as the noble Lord Forsyth said. It was happening to their own businesses, and they were covering it up. Isn't this further evidence that things should be done now, rather than wait for some far judgment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, 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 thank you, Honourable Friend, for that. The, the Horizon system has been upgraded, and has been upgraded again since 2017. We now have uh, a reasonable audit that that is now working satisfactorily. It will now further be replaced by a closed system that will run alongside the current system. So I think there's now a feeling that there's efficacy in that system. What, is, what, what the Noble Lord is referring to is why was there a, an unshakable belief in the computer system going on for so long? And we need to understand exactly how that happened. How, what was the role of Fujitsu in that? Was this corporate malfeasance? Was this the role of one or two individual uh, bad actors, etc.? We need to get to the bottom of that, and that is what the Williams inquiry will do. My lords, my lords, my noble friend, Lord Seeker's reference to the comparative inaction in Carillion in respect of the directors of that company, it's just but one of a number of scandals, of which uh, the Post Office Horizon scandal is now the latest, of just how poorly the UK is equipped to deal with corporate abuses. When we look across the Atlantic to New York, uh, at the instance of its uh, district attorney, Manhattan's district attorney, two, uh, uh, the, the Trump corporate, of the Trump Corporation's many organisations, 17 were convicted of criminal offences, including tax fraud. Uh, their uh, chief financial uh, officer pleaded guilty and was fined the maximum in compensation and went to jail for five months. And now the, the uh, New York uh, Attorney General is asking a court to ban Trump and his three eldest children from ever running a corporate business in New York again and to fine them $250 million. Is the noble Lord the Minister able to point me to any similar type of prosecution in this country, or is he able to tell me how that could ever happen here because it could not? Thank the noble Lord for that question. Um, the, the Financial Reporting Council is a body in the UK which deals with uh, accounting failures. Uh, that had a considerable review following the failure of Carillion 2018. That was a Sir John Kingman review following Carillion British Home Stores. Uh, a number of Carillion's previous directors have been disqualified. Other cases are still underway. And I would say the FRC is now much more effective as an audit regulator. It has had a change of personnel. It is far less uh, 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 the, the relationship between the, the, the FRC and the audit companies has, has been removed at further arm's length. There's still a long way to go, but the, audit, the FRC is, is now in a position to take action in a more, more stringent fashion. My Lord, Lords, uh, my Lords. I'm, this is not a new question. Noble Lords from across your Lordship's House have been asking this, and I first raised it in 2019 after the, the court case. I'm, as a sole shareholder, Her Majesty's Government have both a right and a responsibility. So can I take the Noble Lord the Minister, back to the original questions. What are we actually going to do to hold the board members who failed in their company's house and their director's duties to account um, when the report comes, the Williams report comes? I'm a noble lord. So he's right to say that the, uh, it's, it's for the members of the company to take action against directors if they breach their statutory um, duties. In this case, the sole shareholder is the government. 
and that therefore in that case, once the inquiry has, has finished, the government will then be in a position to take action specifically against any directors who failed in their duties.